Many of you may have looked up at the night sky and wondered what is out there in the vastness of space. Well, one way to find out is to go there and explore for yourself. Today, we're going to be joined by one such explorer, the musician, photographer, and astronaut, Commander Chris Hadfield. Chris Hadfield is one of the world's most accomplished and seasoned astronauts. He was the first Canadian to walk in space. He flew the space shuttle twice, and most recently commanded the International Space Station. Chris has recently released a book called You Are Here, which is full of hundreds of images taken of planet Earth whilst he was on board the International Space Station. These photographs were taken of something very large, very far away, but we think they look like pictures taken of something quite small up close. So we invited him to see if he could recreate any of these photos of the Earth from space, but using some textures from down here on planet Earth. I think a lot of us grew up with, with the sense of the world to be like this, to be uh, sort of smooth, to be north up, um, and to have every country a different color, and, and to have a clear understanding of the geography, but not much of an understanding of the geology of the world. That's, that's sort of what we're brought up with. But the actual rawness of the world is, is so different in the, in the roughness, and. And, and the texture of it, the textures are so important so that something that looks smooth and unfeatured in most of our maps and globes is in fact uh, it, almost like art. It's, it's so varied and the places where people live, we've left an imprint, but so like, like San Francisco Bay, but so much of the world is just raw nature like across the Amazon or, or across the deserts or the mountains of the world. And uh, being a person up there holding a camera you are struck by the, the stark differences between what you grew up with and what the world actually truly looks like. You're, you're floating weightless with your head down towards the world, so you have your toes curled around the hatch just so it keeps your body stable, like, like uh, I don't know, like a sloth or something <laughs> up there. And you're holding on and you're holding the camera and you're looking at the world, looking around, you know, and the world goes by at eight kilometers a second. If you want a really good picture of Bristol, then you want to start getting your camera ready over Nova Scotia in Canada because it's only going to be a few minutes before, shoot, here comes Ireland. And then, you know, there's Ireland, there's Cork, okay, there's, there's Dublin right there. And whoa, look, there's the whole Severn and where the heck is Bristol? There's Bath, there's, there it is. Chick, 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 chick. Whoop, there's London. And it's that kind of pace. So the disadvantage uh, is the speed, but it's the advantage too because you get all of those shots of, of Bristol and the surrounding area. Um, but then before you can completely capture it, you're somewhere else. And when you come around the world the, the next time overhead, the lighting will be different and the weather will be different. The season may have changed a little. So you get the beauty of a constantly refreshed scene to take the pictures of. So it, the speed, I think, is both a plus and a minus. <laughs> well, let's slow things down a little bit here and see if we can try and recreate some of those textures and things that we were talking about. So right. we've got lots of different things from uh, paper, we've got all sorts of rocks, some meteorites, some bits of metal and wood. So if you're up for it, sure. we have a camera yep. and uh, we can zoom in and see what we can try and get. Well, I want to do something simple first and that okay. is if you look just south and east of the Sahara, there are some areas uh, just on the edge of uh, Saudi Arabia where the, the rawness of the world is right at the surface. You can see where the, the fumaroles and the volcanoes erupted recently and there's been almost no weathering of water there to change the land and it, it looks a lot like the roughness there and I think with this light and the angle across that level of roughness, if, even though this is more like a, a pumice sort of lava, but but if you, um, if you get a close-up of that, I bet you it'll look a lot like the pictures of Saudi Arabia. Let's go for that then. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. That's good. What were some of the most surprising things you saw? At one point I saw a noctilucent clouds, which were super high altitude clouds that are uh, like 120 miles above the earth. And they're the tiniest traces of water vapor up there. But if you can catch the sun on the other side of the horizon, they come up and they reflect off those clouds to you in orbit. You can hardly ever see them from the world. But uh, from a spaceship, once in a while you can see them. They, they are beautiful. They look like light blue waves. They look a little bit like this stuff here, actually. They look, um, you get sort of this light, oh, actually, if we do that right. Yeah, let's see if we here, can. Here, pull that sort of tight there. 
Nice, that's a good start. I like that. A little bit of the Noctilucent cloud, okay. <laughs> and let's see, the, the orange of the Sahara, but it comes in windrows, uh, especially if you look in the empty quarter. So let's try and fold this so that we get parallel rows like that. Pull it into one focal plane if you can. Yeah, I like that. Okay, come in closer. So on board a spaceship, someone could have asked me, you know, so I'm over top of Bristol now, and could you please take a, a picture of Bristol, and then could you please take a picture of Karachi, and show me, <laughs> and show me the difference here. And they both are at the uh, sort of the end of a, of a river, and there's a population there that's been there for thousands of years, and, and so there's some parallels of how the two are set up. And it, it takes so little time to come across, and so it puts you in a neat perspective to really see the world. Let's take a picture of the background of the Milky Way while we're here. <laughs> um, but uh, just make, yeah, make it big. Just hang it down as a curtain and we'll, we'll get a Milky Way picture. Oh, oh, actually, this ends up looking more like Hawaii. It's nice. <laughs> I think what we should go for is the edge of the world and the atmosphere above it. I think that, that would be a great yeah. shot here. So we'll get the edge of the world and the atmosphere above it. And all you have to do is hold the world without making a shadow. Okay. Consider yourself to some sort of ancient god. <laughs> oh, this is cool. We're looking like at, uh, at the very edge of the Sahara with the blue behind. Or maybe, you know what this really looks like is the edge of the Sahara in the Mediterranean, right where you hit the shoreline of the two. Looks far better than it ought to. What do you think the kind of future for human exploration holds in store for us? Well, if you let me hold the globe here, what's, what's okay. going on now, of course, is the space station goes around and around the world. It, it doesn't go around the equator. It's actually tipped up about this high. So it goes around the world tipped from the equator like, like, uh, like that far. So the world, we go around fast and then the world slowly turns underneath us. So we get a different view every time, which is great. But we're only 400 kilometers above the surface, you know. The, so it's a really good place to understand the planet and a good place to test space equipment. But eventually, uh, we're gonna have to go away from the world. And I think uh, if you take the, the whole way around the equator here, which is about 25,000 miles, um, it's only 400,000 all the way to the moon, right? So you can uh, not have to go all that far to get all the way to the moon, about three days. And I think we will go from the space station going around and around. Once it's taught us everything it can about how to build spaceships and how to safely live off the planet for long times, then we'll go to the moon. And I think we'll live on the moon for a few generations, sort of like we, we currently, for the last hundred years, have been living in Antarctica. We've learned how to live in Antarctica over the last hundred years. I think we'll live on the moon for a few generations, sort it out, figure it out, invent the things, learn about the world, learn about the universe, learn about the moon, and then have made it safe enough that maybe we want to take off from the world and go all the way to Mars. But we've got some things to learn between now and then. For now, this is a pretty fascinated photographic, fascinating photographic subject. Commander Hadfield, it's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you very much for coming Thank here you. today. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, nice to talk with you. If you'd like to learn how to start taking photos of the stars, then check out our beginner's guide to astrophotography. And for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.